This is uh, Channel 4 with a live report from the Destrehan Ferry. In case uh, some of you have not heard the big news, at 6.15 this morning, the ferry, the George Prince, which was loaded down with 25 automobiles and what they believe to be, uh, could be up to 75, possibly 80 people on board. The ferry was in midstream and was apparently trying to beat a ship across the river. And from the eyewitness accounts, the ferry, uh, when it determined that it could not beat the ship, tried to either reverse its engines or went dead in the water, what have you, whatever happened, the ship hit the ferry, rolling it over, throwing everybody into the water, the foot pedestrians, the cars, and everything. Now, we have some eyewitnesses with us. Let me ask you, I've talked to some of the people who were thrown into the water just a short while ago at the hospital. Now, one man, a Mr. Shotlane, C-H-A-T-E-L-A-I-N, tells me that he was he was sitting in his pickup truck, and he says he all of a sudden he felt that, that the, the ferry boat had uh, slowed down, possibly went dead in the water. He says he looks up, and he sees the ship. The ship rolls right over him throws everybody into the water. He's, he was in the pickup truck. The pickup truck begins to sink, and he says he's kicking wildly at the uh, windshield. He finally gets the windshield out. He says it, it, he thought it would take him forever to come up through the water. He says he finally breaks the surface, and he says there's the ship on him, top of him again, and rolls on top of him, plus a number of vehicles and a number of people in the water, and continued to roll over the, uh, over the George Prince. And uh, after that, he says it was a pretty wild scene. There was some cars floating down river, the cars and trucks and people inside were screaming and banging and trying to get out of these vehicles. And he says they just began sinking one by one. Is that the same thing that you guys saw? I'm, my name's Ennis. I'm, I'm the one that seen it. But uh, by the time we got there, we didn't, there wasn't a car floating. Yeah, they sank very rapidly. You see, by the time I got their attention and everything, the, the boat had already sunk. And when we turned around, it turned, had, we had to turn around over there and come back over here. And by the time we got to them, we didn't have no lights, it was dark. And you can't just run up to something like that. And what were the people in the water doing when you got there? Well, they was on top of the, uh, the bottom, not on top of the boat, on the bottom of the boat, upside down. upside down. The boat was upside down. Were there people in the water as well? There was on the side. You see the George Prince not, not made like this here, and they got a sideboard on it. And they was on the side of that, and I went and got a, a seat. There's only thing on there. I got a seat and we put down there. Sir, let me let me ask you. Uh, which one of you drives the boat? The engineer or the, or the pilot? Not, no, the pilot. The pilot. Yeah. The pilot. The pilot. Either one on the ferry. No, all right. The okay. Just passengers. All right. Just passengers. Yeah. What were the people's reactions when you did pick them out of the water? How were they acting? What were they saying? Excited and nervous. Shook up. What did they tell you? Did they say anything? Get us all here. All shook up. Uh, just want to know what happened. Uh, one of them was in a wheelhouse. Uh, the captain had had a hard time with him. He, uh, he was just like out of his head in a way. Just shook up. Was there any yeah. frightened? Some victims are believed to have washed downstream in the cold, swift waters and are clinging to debris. There was considerable debris, jackets, lunch boxes, tool buckets, that type of thing, washed along shore for about a mile down river. We're at the Destrehan Landing, or the Luling side of the river right now at the landing. The ferry itself is on the west bank. It was coming from east to west when the accident occurred and is about a mile downriver from here at this time. Let me point out, you know, you, you, you said it was going from east to west, which is true. Uh, and this was a very pitiful sight at the hospital and around here, in fact, right up around the levee. A lot of the, the, the parents, the mothers, and loved ones, uh, wives of these people live on the other side of the river. And when they heard about it, they ran to this side and couldn't get across. They, they were listening on the radio and they heard what had happened. They didn't know whether, the, whether there were any survivors. You know, they knew that the ferry was being very heavily traveled. So, in essence, they were trapped on the other side. And, and I understand near pandemonium broke out. Uh, since then, many of them have made their way around the Huey P. Long Bridge and uh, into the hospital. And, and like this morning, Pete Lambusi and I were shooting some film uh, in the back of the hospital. Uh, when they brought some of the bodies in. And uh, the, the women in hysterics would run back there and it's, who is it, who is it, is, my, is it my son, you know? And uh, it, it, was a, it was a very bad scene. The scene was somewhat confused for a short while here at the St. Charles General Hospital as most of the survivors, in fact, 15 of them arrived here shortly after the accident. They didn't mind talking about what happened. Most of them were pretty graphic in their descriptions. 
What happened? You remember going under the water and then coming up? Yeah, well, yeah, I went under. I hold on the side of the rail and I went under. And I just held on. I held on and I climbed up to the top. On the, you know, the boat was turned over and I turned up where it could come up at. And I didn't see my friend no more. I was calling out for him, but I didn't see him. You think a lot of people died there this morning? I guess so. I don't know. Did you see any automobiles or trucks floating in the water after that with yeah, people they, inside? They had a lot of cars floating. I don't know if it had people inside, but they had a lot of cars floating. Who are you taking him? I was in my truck right in front of the passenger, so or on the ferry, and all of a sudden I saw everybody running. Before I could even open my door and get out, that big old ship passed over us, running right over us, and I was underwater in my truck, and I was holding my breath, and next thing you know, the windshield broke. And I came out through that, came up. Seemed like I was coming up forever. See them trying to get out and everything, you know, people climbing up on top of the cars. Now you you know? were swimming in the water. Yeah. And you looked out and you and saw had cars. Yeah, cars floating all over, you know. And you saw people in the automobiles. Yeah. Were they able to get out? No, I have no idea. You know, I was trying to. What's the last impression you have that they did or did not? They did not. What did you see? What was happening there? All right, the ferry itself, uh, after the collision, floated downriver in, in an inverted position. The ferry right now is against the bank. The uh, stern of the ferry is against the bank. The bow is protruding uh, about 30 feet of, in the air. The, uh, the bottom of the ferry is upriver. The uh, vehicle deck, of course, is downriver. Divers have entered the passenger compartment uh, they removed uh, 12 persons, 12 bodies from the passenger compartment and uh, six bodies from the engine room. Is that where most of the bodies are now being found in the passenger area? Most uh, 12 were found in the passenger area, six were found in the engine room. Are there more bodies still inside? Apparently 98% uh, of the hull has been searched and uh, we don't anticipate finding any more bodies. Angela, as you can see, nothing much has changed at this time. Rescue operate, whether the rescue operation to the ferry at this point are still underway. Uh, a couple of the men working on top of the ferry have been cleared, which I am told is a sign that we should be proceeding in just a few minutes. Uh, regardless how much time it takes, as we told you earlier, we'll stay here throughout the night until it's raised and provide film for Bill Elder's 12 o'clock show. I failed to tell you earlier that no bodies have been found thus far, but some of the divers have reported that they have found a number of cars under the ferry itself. I'd like to take these last few seconds of the show to thank a number of people that have made a disastrous day a little bit more bearable. The Salvation Army and Goodwill and CB radio operators in this area, they came together to provide everything from coffee and hot chocolate to sandwiches for the people and the, uh, uh, that are working here at the site and the uh, family of the survivors. The Red Cross has also done the same thing. Civil Defense from St. Bernard Parish and St. Charles Parish have provided assistance. And a special thank you from the news media to Sheriff John Sanama of uh, St. Charles Parish, who has uh, much assistance to us here today, as were the state police. And if we forgot anybody, we apologize. It has been a double parish effort, to say the very least, and we'll bring you the continuing tragedy 
of St. Charles and St. John Parish that occurred early this morning. Good night. Well, that's exactly what you're looking at is a giant crane that we looked at for so long last night. Actually, not a lot of things have changed here. Uh, for the people that were watching last night, the only change has been the ferry. They hooked up cables to it. The bow of it had been facing towards New Orleans, and they pulled it back towards them. The men that are working on that uh, were all here last night. They've worked a good 48-hour shift and are still at it. Here's some of the film that we ran last night. Uh, last night, one of the men working on the barge itself uh, were involved in an accident. Uh, a pipe, a loose piece of pipe that had been strung up earlier fell and hit him. I understand he's in one of the hospitals in good condition. It was not a serious injury. Uh, I was thought earlier that he was hit by a cable that had broke, but that was incorrect. You're looking at some of the uh, film that was taken here last night. As we described, there were about 100 people out here, including some members of families awaiting word on uh, uh, missing members of their families. There were large campfires. Uh, it was just an atmosphere almost of like, uh, as we said last night, a, a nightmare Hollywood set. Everything led by strobe lights who were deep in the woods here on the Levee Batcher, uh, north of Luling, Louisiana, about a mile and a half. And the scene as you hear it today, or see it today, is not that uh, different. What they've done, they've pulled the ferry up, and we are told that the ferry is mired in the mud, in the bottom of it, and what they're trying to do is make sure that when they pull it up, it doesn't snap in two. So they're draining some of the water out of it, trying to secure some of those hatches. And Brian, you've been here most of the morning. You had some earlier reports. What's the latest events? That's true, Garland. Upriver, about a mile and a half farther north toward Baton Rouge from our present location. There are tugboats and work crews, work boats, trying to locate and raise the cars that were on board the ferry. They expect to be about 35 automobiles, trucks that were lost when the ferry coll collapsed, or rather overturned when it collided with the tanker SS Frosta. So far, none of those vehicles have yet been raised. However, we understand about eight of them have been located. The vehicles will be raised, put on board the ferry boat that is running right now, the LAK Wilds. The bodies will be identified and taken to Norco. The vehicles will be brought here to the West Bank near Luling. Garland? Finally, Bill, what uh, they're planning on doing with this barge at this time, and as of, as of last night and as of today, the uh, plans change almost on an hourly basis. They hope to pull the barge up and put it on the bank because they are afraid of it splitting in the condition it's in. If they can get it out of the mud and it does has some semblance of floating, then they'll pull it on the Avenue. But in essence, not much has changed here, Bill. We'll be here throughout the day just in case they free it from the mud and start some moves with it. Bill? It is red. like to assure the survivors and the next of kin and everyone concerned about this that federal and state authorities will do everything possible to recover the bodies as soon as possible. We will cooperate with the Navy Department and the Coast Guard in the investigation as to the cause of the accident and uh, the state of Louisiana and the federal government to the extent of its involvement will do everything possible to uh, prevent this from occurring again. We don't want to overreact. This is the first such tragedy of this nature and years. Uh, we operate 20 ferries in Louisiana at 20 different sites, uh, and the operations are all different. What happened, how it happened, how it could have possibly happened, no one seems to know. We're all still in a state of shock. What about financial relief for the families? Uh, that, of course, will uh, come as a result of, and depending upon the findings of the Coast Guard, what actually happened as soon as we establish uh, some guidelines as to uh, who is responsible and uh, where we certainly aren't going to exercise what probably is the right of the state simply to abandon the vessel. Uh, that would be a callous disregard of the human aspects of this terrible tragedy. Uh, I'm sure that the people of Louisiana would want to respond to the extent that we can to um, try in some way to uh, recognize the great loss that uh, the wives and children and fathers and mothers and uh, the relatives of these people. It's really tragic to get killed on the way to work. I mean, uh, especially at 6 o'clock in the morning when people are up 
uh, going about their lawful pursuits, trying to earn a living for themselves and their family. And this tremendous river, which has meant so much to Louisiana and economic betterment and prosperity, has claimed a price. Uh, base to the red truck. Right here. Okay, you're on the airline at this time, and Phil is hoisting over from the uh, booth on what we're seeing. Uh, so stay tight on the ferry. You hear that? Uh, we'll advise you when we uh, discontinue live coverage. Okay. Other failure could have caused a tragic accident. This has been a special live report for Channel 4 News. We return you now to regular programming.